Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Atom RPG with me, Bring It Down. Off camera, I made it to the looter's base. I only hit uh, two random encounters on the way. A group of rats and a group of bandits. And I managed to level up. Let's put some points into melee weapons and throwing weapons. And we still have three levels to go until I get a new perk. So. Also, that bandit encounter gave me a lot of trouble. Uh, not because I played it poorly, but because the AI kept bugging out. Uh, so the first attempt, Fidel bugged out. He wouldn't attack or move. He had his gun out. He had ammunition in his gun. He was in range of the enemy. He just wouldn't shoot. He just stood there. And so I had to reload because I couldn't get him to do anything. I even tried changing his stance from aggressive to avoid. And he just didn't do anything. And then uh, the second attempt... I got killed by the bandits very quickly in like one turn. Third attempt, Zulbar is bugged out. He got in front of me so he's taking a lot of shots so I put him on a void to get away. So when it was his turn, instead of avoiding, he just ran back and forth between the two tiles. So he's still in front of everybody and he got killed. So I reloaded that attempt. The third attempt, I, I won the encounter. But it was still weird because it, Fidel and a bandit, like they, their turns overlapped and they were going at the same time. I don't know, it's a lot of stuff I've never seen before. It's, it's really weird. Super weird indeed. Alright, I want his ammunition. Because... Alexander is over-encumbered right now. Let's see. Let's get rid of some of this heavy stuff. Perfect. Alright, well earned man with a mustache. How do I know he has a mustache? Whatever. A well earned man with a mustache and glasses stands in your way, guarding the station in front of you. He growls a single word. Password. I'll hold up a sec with the passwords. Let's talk. Uh, what do you want? Uh, what are you guarding? The entrance to the looter's base. What else? I hope I don't need to explain to you who we are. Uh, please do. It sounds interesting. You really don't know. Looters are a great power in these parts. The one word that best describes a stalker is tramp. And they associate with tramps too. As for us, we get all sorts of people. From crime bosses of the past to hagglers. From simple thugs to serious players. That's because we don't rummage through garbage for goods. We're the ones selling anything of value in this city. I see. Another question. Uh, what else? Why do people need a password to enter? Because we don't feed, or sorry, because we don't need any bottom feeders here. Stalkers let anyone in. It's painful to see the pigs die their places become. Here, you can only enter if you're invited. Seems complicated. I have another question. Who do you work for? We don't have a ringleader like stalkers. I work in the common interest. I see. Uh, next question. Have you heard anything interesting lately? One of our mates has gone missing. Maxim. I saw him off ages ago, but he never returned. There was a girl with him, a redhead. You can find her somewhere around the camp. Then again, he might have returned through the upper entrance. I haven't checked. Who knows? Another question. Let's change the subject. As you wish. Do you know the password? Password? But of course, the password. This will be interesting. I'm all ears. Alright, uh, look. I'm not going to cause any trouble. Can't you let me in on the password? The guard can't help smiling. Oh, you tramp, you. Okay. Because you're such a laugh, I'll let you in for one grand. But this isn't a standing offer. If you don't have the cash, try remembering the password next time. I brandish your thick and intimidating fists. This is the first part of the password, and this is the second. Get what I mean, scum? The guard trembles in reply, and possibly releases a teaspoonful of urine in his pants. Alright, alright, slow down. Our doors are always open to athletes and fighters, even when they arrive uninvited. Welcome aboard. Cool, but I'd better go. I'd better go. That's said get going. Oh, wow. 350 XP apiece. For a total of 700 experience. 
Really glad I didn't give him the password. Alright, I'm not gonna over encumber Alexander anymore. I'm just gonna grab this myself. Sunglasses. One could consider sunglasses an actual artifact in the wastes, to save the owner's eyes from the merciless rays of the sun. I don't think I've ever seen sunglasses in the game before. So... I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna need these for a quest or something later, or they're gonna have some unique... interaction. I mean, it's only two rubles. I mean, it's a it's a worthwhile investment. On one look, and you can tell the woman is a mutant, though the eyes don't give her away like the others. Instead, you can tell she's an evolved human by her three voluptuous breasts. Seeing you sta uh, staring at her deformity, the woman spits out her cigarette and addresses you in a growly, masculine voice. What was that, young man? You're saying you want to have some adult fun with Ludka one and a half? We can talk about that. Hee <laughs> hee. Don't risk it, amigo. This lady. She looks like a few fleeting hours of pleasure can lead to long-term problems for your little man. Don't you syphilis... Uh, ahem. Don't you see what I mean? You get the miniature crabs, Cabron. Quit your yapping, you bald jerk. Even if the client gets a little, a little extra something, the stalker-based doc will fix him up for just a few bottles of vodka. Rar... Rar... Ri... Ra... Bark, bark. For a second, it seems like Zilbars is trying to bark gonorrhea as he nips your pants legs and tries to drag you, in, drag you to safety. You shoo the dog away, but his actions do make you think. Look at this four-legged moralist. I'd rather start our friendship with a few questions. Do you have time to talk? The woman shrugs and bears her lips on a crooked smile full of yellow, uneven teeth. Hee hee. You didn't run as soon as you learned you were talking to a mutant. That's good. Sure, we can talk for a bit. I want to ask you a few questions. Well, what is it? Your nickname is One and a Half. Why is that? Woman jiggles her three breasts in your direction. Because I have boobs enough for one and a half women. Because there's three of them. Do you get it yet? But I'm pretty normal in, other res in all other respects. Promise. Got it. Uh, now another question. How's the clientele around here? Awful. That's how. After the first moment of shock and delight, they avoid me. One time is enough, just so they can say they tried the gimmick. Then it's back to sex with the normies. I'm barely scraping by. I'm glad you haven't sunk into a black depression yet. Time for me to go. Why do I say it's time for me to go? Eh, whatever. How's life around here? Not as good as it was in True to Grad, that's for sure. Still, I've got a bed and a roof over my head, so it's not a total bummer. Well, hold on tight. Your fortunes might change one day. Another question. I got any good rumors to share. Dude, when you share a bed with a guy, he always wants to yak on about something. The weirdest thing I heard yet was about these muted Boy Scout pipes, or horns or whatever, drawn on dumpsters and walls everywhere. I figured it was some old fella feeling nostalgic for the Soviet Union scouts, but it turned out to be the sigil of a violent gang. They rob, they kill, they deal in drugs and slaves. Although it seems that nobody knows where they meet, or who their members really are. Wow, that's scary. I know here's another question. Let's change the subject. Oh, we can change the subject, I guess. Hee <laughs> hee. A mutants in your line of work are a rare sight. What's your story? Luckily, the hooker looks down at her feet. You think I was always like this? Actually, yeah, I was. But I used to have a better life. I worked in a bar near Trudegrad. A fancy place, too. I'd even sell my body most nights. Just danced and twirled around a narrow sewage pipe and jiggled my butt. Just like the girls on all those American VHS tapes. Some days, I even got to wait tables. But then I was seduced by the devil. A devil by the name of Borglak Gudu Gorgon. A mutant nationalist and entrepreneur. He was all like, hey come on, you should work with your own kind. We'll open an even fancier place near the dead city, and end up swimming in Cash Baby. Darn liar. Brogog... Blorg, what, what kind of abortion of a name is that? I'm telling you, he was a mutant nationalist. 
Borglak Gudugorgon was his evolved name, he called it. The normie name he was born with was Boris Gudkov. Believe it or not, this renaming business is a popular movement among wasteland mutants. They call themselves an evolved version of humanity, and make up scary sounding names to normal folks with fear, will fear and respect them. I hate it. Most people think we're monsters already, never mind the weirdo names and bad attitude. Now what happened after you moved here? Uh, nothing good, that's what. Borglak opened a crappy dive bar in this darn city. Okay, so we heard a rumor about a mutant that opened a bar in the dead city, so this is that story. Uh, Borglak opened a crappy dive bar in this darn city, but the first customers turned out to be psychos from the Sober Wasteland Society. They burned out poor Borglak, along with his hut and all the booze. I barely escaped the inferno. The bastards blocked the door with a cart, so I had to jump out a window. After that, I ended up here, since I can't go anywhere else. The sobriety freaks torched our car too, because it had beer written on the side. Uh, what's this sober wasteland society about? They're nothing but a gang of crazies. They only attack small drinking establishments and avoid the larger taverns and bars because they're cowards. Uh, let me guess, you don't have the money to get back. Wow, you're a keen observer of the natural world. A, r a real reader of people. Gosh darn it. Because of Borglak, I barely saved my own hide, let alone any money. Right, let's not talk about this anymore. I want to change the subject. Alright, uh, let's talk about what you're offering. What's there to talk about? It's easy. 150 rubles and a rubber means safe sex. 200 means fun sex. Alright, uh, let's... Save. The hooker who said her name was Ludka has blonde hair, blue eyes, and is sporting mutant triple cleavage. She grins and asks in a low, throaty voice. Hey, so what do you want to do? Uh, let's chat about your kinky offer. I've already read that. Alright, uh, for this guy, safety is priority number one. Love comes second. Uh, where do we go now? The woman smiles as she pockets your money. I'll show you everything when we get there. Let's go. Oh, we're just... okay. <laughs> right over here. I'm doing this for the potential experience and... Because the one prostitute, was it in Krasno? If you sleep with her without protection, you get... You can unlock a series of uh, stashes across the wasteland. So there's probably... there might be a reward for sleeping with... With her as well. But in the meantime, I'll check out some graffiti. Like that skeleton. for a while and I got 69 experience is that the standard for hanging out with prostitutes all right we already read that all right let's quick save let's see what happens if we don't use protection no need for the darn rubber here's the cash now where are we gonna do it pretty lady the woman smiles as she tucks the rubles away in her three-cup bra. Let's go, young man. Alright, let's uh, peruse the... <laughs> more of the station here. There's actually a lot of NPCs here. The area's not super big. I guess this takes us back up top. This is the red-haired woman the guard told us about. At least she's the only one that I see, so I assume that's that's the one he was talking about. All right. This is cool. 
Hee hee, you're one brave dude. If something starts itching, it's not your pants' fault. Stalker Base has a nice medic who will help you out for a bottle of vodka or two. I don't feel so good. You gained ability Atomic Gonorrhea. The post-nuclear version of a shameful disease, the infected individual experiences pain, burning, and insufferable itchiness in his private parts. Minus two endurance, minus one personality, minus one dexterity. No thank you. No thank you. I'm reloading that. I'm not paying 200 rubles for a debuff. Let's talk to the campfire guy. Well, let's see if he wants... Right, what happens if I put on my stealth gear? There we go. Oh, it's condensed milk, too. A tough guy in dirty work clothes silently watches the fire. Sometimes he turns away to throw another chair leg into the flames. A nice fire you got going. The man shudders and looks at you. Huh? Ah, yeah. I care to answer some questions for me? Nah, I'm not feeling like it. Sorry. Uh, what you doing here? You a stalker? Me? Nah, I'm no stalker. Me and the boys here. We help stalkers and looters clear collapsed passages into ruins and stuff like that. Uh, where are your boys now? The man shrugs. A heck if I know. One of them was killed by that uh, woodpecker, serial killer guy last month. So they're drinking in his honor ever since. Don't worry. If I give them a signal, they'll quickly jump to the opportunity and we'll clear all the rubble you want cleared. Uh, job pays well? We cope. Dead City has so many ruins people need access to. We always get new orders. Fine. I won't keep you any longer. Bye. Alright, don't interfere with them. Oh, this is a new description. A silent tough guy in dirty work clothes looks like he's bewitched by the glow of the fire. A wandering smile is not leaving his face. Don't interfere with him. Alright, I'm assuming he's for a quest later. Initially I thought I could hire him, based on his description, to uh, clear out. So some of the passages in the uh, Metro Overworld map are blocked by debris. I thought he's going to let me hire him for those, but I guess not. Well, what's behind this guy? A wolf howling at the moon. It's like an eagle with a star above it. Some interesting artwork. Tribal tattoo of some kind, I guess. Huh. An old gray hair of around 60 is digging through a huge cloth bag full of fountain pens, ink bottles, and old fashioned syringes. Noticing you, he smiles and asks. You here for the tattoo tournament? Oh, these are tattoos. Okay, that that makes sense. Uh, want to compete against the best? Want to win big? Are you here to get yourself a shiny new tattoo from the Ink Master himself, Denisich? Ink Master Denisich in the flesh. Amazing. I read a lot about you back when I first fell in love with the art of the tattoo, even in pre-war publications. Glad to hear I'm so popular. Well, if you've got the cash, I might just leave you with an eternal memento of my work. No, sorry. I decided not to get any tattoos. They're too strongly associated with the criminal lifestyle in our culture. I don't want people to think of I'm some bandit. Maybe in another life I'll be covered head to toe in ink. But sadly not in this one. Ah, another victim of stereotypes. I'd like to ask you some questions. I have time to kill. Let's talk. How did you become a tattoo artist? The old man rolls up his sleeves and displays his hands. They're completely covered in blurry old markings. This kind of ink was used by prisoners before the war to show how long and for what crime they were incarcerated. I'm a thief, an experienced one. I first did time as a kid, two stints for mugging, a third one for robbing an apartment, and the last for selling stolen goods. It's a long story, but each time I got my butt thrown behind bars, I befriended the inmates who were good at inking. I studied their art and practiced on willing prisoners. Eventually, I became so good, even the head honchos were lining up to get my work. Practice is the best teacher. Next question. Now what else do you want to know? Is the job well paid? I'm pretty happy with the cash I get. Even though there are no more prisons, at least in the pre-war sense, there are plenty of criminals who want to look cool and tough. Every lowly highwayman dreams of becoming a well-respected mobster. 
You can't be that without awesome tats. That's where I get my clientele. Well, you're in luck then. Another question. Uh, what can you tell me about this place? It's a nice place. It has a soul, you know? It may not be the safest crap hole around, nor the best smelling, but it's got soul, kid. Well, anything is possible. Let me ask you something else. I care to share any interesting stories with me. Hee <laughs> hee. You know, there's a tall tale that's popular with tattoo artists. It's about Sioma Veronic wanting a cool eagle tat on his back. He hired a local artist called Demas the Handless for this job, but Demas had never seen an eagle in his life, so he basically tattooed a rooster on Sioma's back. Waddle, comb, and tail. <laughs> when Sioma saw this masterwork in a mirror, well, what can I say? That day, Demas the, Demas the Handless earned his nickname, because Sioma chopped both his hands right off. So this guy was called Handless before or after he lost his hands? Uh, Dennis Itch shrugs. Even before. It's like the old axiom. How you name a boat is how she will float. Same goes for people. Huh. Let me ask you another question. I've heard enough. How about we change the subject? The subject can always be changed. Only tattoos are forever. Alright, uh, ink me up with something, tattoo man. The old man laughs as he takes a fountain pen out of his bag and starts sucking the stale pre-war ink out of it. You came to the right place. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. You're talking to the best tattoo artist in the wastes. Nobody does it like me. That's why I judge competitions instead of entering them. Tell me what interests you. One ink job costs 2,000 rubles, and three jobs per person is my limit. I want to stay exclusive after all. Oh sweet child of mine. Do not dirty your pure skin with disgusting prison tattoos. A man's body is his Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Your duty is to keep it in the same state as when your creator, the mighty Lenin, fashioned it from clay in the tears of humble laborers. Where's your Lenin now? He's dead, but tattoos are forever. You close your eyes, trying to remember the most appealing tattoos you've seen. From those you recall, you select a few you might want permanently inscribed on your body. You come up with three potential ink jobs right away. Then, a fourth occurs to you, but you're not too sure about that one. So I get some cool looking stars up near my clavicles. Mama right over my heart. I can get Adam tattooed in the center of my chest. <laughs> but don't ask why. I want my belly to be covered with a huge pig-nosed rat and a crown that, with the word rat boy on it. Why would... So that's probably... I think that's the, uh, the one I'm not too sure about. Alright, um... Now, I don't want to mess my skin up. Money's tight right now, too. Can we change the subject? Nicely said, but I have to run. Right, let's quick save. Let's see what's going on with these tattoos. I can't pass up the chance to get a nifty tattoo. Now, what do you want me to ink? Speak up. And kindly don't forget the 2,000 rubles. I'm going to need that before I do any work. Alright, ink me up a... Uh, well, let's get the Adam tattoo, actually. I want you to tattoo the word Adam right in the center of my chest. Don't ask why. The man counts your money and shoots you a suspicious glance. Why tattoo the name of a mythical organization on your body? Even if, even if they were real, me and you wouldn't be fighting against them. They'd be nothing but pigs, worse than a pre-war militia. Those government jerks have no place in this world no more. Anyway, undress. I want to ink you up good. The tattoo artist dips his needle into some ink mixed with coal powder and starts working on your new tattoo. Slowly but surely, the name of your beloved organization materializes in a bold, bulky font. He then stylizes the A to look like a cartoon atom bomb, and the O to depict a hydrogen atom. Don't know why you want something like that, but I at least made it look pretty. Now go away and cool down for a bit. Yep, see ya. A new ability, Atom Tattoo. Does it tell me what it does? Do anything? It won't let me highlight it. I wonder if it's gonna give me like a unique interaction or something. I get three tattoos. Let's talk to him again. A man Denisich inspects several silver needles protruding from a ball of weathered yarn. He looks at you in greeting before returning to his needles and asks, "All right, I can't pass up the chance to get a nifty tattoo." 
Oh, I can't get the other tattoo now. All right, give me some cool looking stars up near my clavicles. The man takes your money and gives you a mock frown. Oh, so you look like a pre-war master thief. Only they had such tats back in the day. But hey, I'm not judging you. Poser, take your clothes off. You strip to the waist while Dennis Hitch dips his silver needle into a puddle of ink and coal powder. Powder. He then begins stabbing the tattoo into your tender flesh. After a few hours of excruciating pain, you finally get up on your feet and look over the wonderfully done thief scars across your stars, not scars, stars across your chest. Now take a hike, will ya? The breeze will soothe your skin. The stale air of this darn dungeon will only aggravate it. Okay, bye. Okay, so now I can see the Adam tattoo. Your chest now sports a permanent reminder of dear old Adam. With such a tattoo, it's only fitting to go on a secret assignment with your trusty AK by your side. Plus 5 to firearms and plus 5 to stealth. See, why can't I highlight this one? And why is my personality minus 1? Did this tattoo reduce my personality by one? Let me reload. I didn't check beforehand. Alright, I'm gonna get that tattoo one more time. I wanna see if that's reducing my... It is! Well, I'm not getting that. What else does it change, though? Does it change anything else? I'll have all my other stats memorized. I don't know what else it would do. If it's for thieves, it probably increases my sneak, right? Or my stealth? That's what, 89? Nope, that didn't change. Melee weapons change, though. Okay, so the star's tattoos increases my melee weapons, because it was at, what, 175 or 185 after the tattoo? Alright, well, let's see what the other tattoo does then. Or le actually, let's get this one. I'm not going to save after I get it. Then let's get the other tattoo. Alright, uh, ink me the word mama right over my heart. The old man takes your money and smiles kindly. You're a true romantic, kid. I can't even bring myself to laugh at you, you big softy. Love for your mother is the purest feeling. Now strip. I'm going to ink you up good. You take off your shirt and sit down next to the old master. He swiftly draws a natural looking heart right over your real heart and writes Mama on it in fancy script. Once the mock-up is ready, he grabs a tiny needle, dips it into a mixture of ink and coal dust, and starts stabbing in your tattoo. An eternity filled with torturous pricks and outraged tissue passes. Then at last, the painful flesh memorial to your mom is finished. You look over the perfectly made tattoo with glee. Go take a walk, kid. You lost a lot of blood. I don't want you passing out of my shop. Thanks, I'll go. Alright, so the mother tattoo gives you plus five martial arts, plus five speechcraft. Does it. Oh, the, that's the mother tattoo, but I still can't read the star's tattoo. That sucks. So, mother tattoo. The word mother is tattooed right over your heart. You always try to resolve conflicts diplomatically. But if that fails, you'll do it with your fists. For mama. <laughs> plus five martial arts and plus five speechcraft. But this one, I guess, increases melee weapons but reduces personality? And I might increase martial arts too, because I shouldn't have over 100, right? Let's reload that. I was hoping that it would push the star's tattoo to the side so I could read that description. Then I was going to go back and get the tattoos in the different order so I could read the other description, but I can't read the stars because it doesn't move. So what we'll do is we'll just get... Yeah, so it looks like the stars tattoo reduces personality by one, but increases my melee weapons and martial arts. I don't think that's worth it though. So we will get the mama tattoo, and that's it, because it seems like that's just a net positive. At the very least, it's not hurting any of my major stats. Oh no, sorry, the mother tattoo increased my martial arts. 
and speechcraft. Yeah, so I guess the star tattoo only increases my melee weapons and then reduces my personality, which is not a worthwhile trade-off. All right, I don't know if I'm gonna start the competition because we only have a couple minutes left. Let's uh, finish exploring the station, and then in the next episode we'll handle the competition. So we'll start at the, this end of the station because it is a dead end. Oh, no, it's not. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Yeah, I'm disappointed you can't highlight this distinction here. So we never got to read the clavicle tattoo. So I wonder what this says. If it's meant to be pointing towards her, or if it's just like generic graffiti. Also, I just realized this is a bathroom, so I'm in a bedroom. All right. I wonder if there's more NPCs to talk to up top as well. I'm just gonna take all y'all's stuff real fast, thank you. Give what we can to Alexander, and... Alright. Then we'll call the episode here, and the next one we will participate in the Tattoo Torment, I guess. Or competition, whatever he calls it. And we'll continue speaking to the other members of Looter's, Looter's Base, not Station. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.